Science Made Cool. Brought to you by London Christian High. Featuring, featuring the, the Atomic, Atomic Triplets. Triplets. Hey guys, can you teach me about chemistry? Daily Beats. Listen up, here's the deal, let me make it clear. Has a thought, it's the rap, gonna let me your ear, and will be changed. Hey, heat rearranged, never the same. Chemical and yuck and game, has a thought, it's the name. states that regardless of the multiple stages or steps of a reaction, the total enthalpy change for the reaction is the sum of all changes. The point of Hess's law is to find the delta H of your target equation. Delta H is the change in enthalpy from reactants to products, so it measures the change in energy in a thermodynamic system. This means when thermochemical equations are manipulated to give a new equation, their delta H values are manipulated in the same way. What you do to the equation, you do to delta H. Say we have to multiply this equation by 2 to reach our target equation. We must also multiply our delta H value by the same amount, so 2. Let's ride on over to our practice problem. The top equation written here is our target equation, given to us without an enthalpy change or delta H value. Using the other two given equations below, we are easily able to solve for our delta H value of our target equation, carbon and oxygen gas, forming carbon monoxide and oxygen gas. The first step to solve for our delta H value of the target equation is to rearrange the given equation so that the products and reactants align with our target equation. In the first given equation, you can see that carbon monoxide is on the reactant side of the equation. To fix this, we're going to flip the given equation, like so. By doing this, you must also flip the sign of the given enthalpy change. As Hess's law states that the changes we make to an equation, we must also make to the delta H value. Therefore, negative 283 kilojoules would be a positive 283 kilojoules. As you can see, carbon and oxygen gas in the second given equation is on the reactant side, so it does not need to be flipped. Now that the products and reactants are aligned properly with the target reaction, we can move on to the next step. Our next step will be simplifying the equations to match our target. This is done by cancelling out elements that are the same, but on opposite sides of different equations. So for example, in the first equation, we have one mole of CO2 on the reactant side. In the second equation, one mole of CO2 on the product side of the equation. Because these elements are the exact same and on different sides of opposite equations, we can cancel both of them out. When we look at our equations, we have all the correct reactants and products that match our target reaction. Now that we have changed our delta H values accordingly, we can move on to the delta H value of our target equation. How do you do this, you may ask? Well, let me show you. The delta H value of our target equation equals the sum of the delta H values of the given equations. So, we add the delta H value of our first equation, which is negative 393 kilojoules, to our delta H value of our second given equation, which is positive 283 kilojoules. Remember that this is a positive number because we had to flip our equations. The sum of these two values is a whopping negative 110 kilojoules. There you have it folks, the delta H value of our target equation is negative 110 kilojoules. Now that we know how to solve for delta H values of our target equations, let's perform a lab to apply our new understanding of this topic. Lab time! Welcome back everybody, we're your lab scientists. For this lab, you will need a lab apron, chemical safety goggles, a coffee cup calorimeter, which is a closed system that can be used to measure energy change by not letting heat escape. You will also need a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder, a thermometer, steel wool, a balance and weighing boat, a stirring rod, one mole per liter concentration of hydrochloric acid, 1.5 centimeters of magnesium metal ribbon, and one gram of magnesium oxide. 
The purpose of this lab is to determine the enthalpy change of this reaction. To do this, we are going to determine the enthalpy change of these two reactions. We have our hydrochloric acid and our calorimeter, and we measured our initial temperature. Using the steel wool, we rubbed the piece of magnesium ribbon and used our balance to obtain about 0.5 grams. Now, we are going to add our magnesium metal to our calorimeter and stir it with our rod, making sure that our calorimeter stays closed so no heat escapes. Now, we will measure the max temperature and use that to calculate our change in enthalpy. Moving on to our second reaction, we will follow the same procedure, but instead we will add magnesium oxide to our calorimeter and then record the maximum temperature reached. <laughs> Disclaimer, this may take more than a few minutes for the temperature to increase, so be patient. Now we can use the change in temperature we recorded in our lab to determine the molar enthalpy of each of the reactions. Looking at our first reaction, we do this by first calculating our heat energy, or Q value, using the equation Q equals mc delta T. We sub in our mass of hydrochloric acid, which is 100 grams, our heat capacity, which is 4.18 joules per grams degrees Celsius, and our change in temperature, which we recorded in our lab to be 19 degrees Celsius. We must then solve for our number of moles using the equation N equals small m over big M. We sub in our mass of magnesium metal, 0.52 grams, and our molar mass, 24.31 grams per mole. This will equal 0.021 moles. Now we can solve for our molar enthalpy by using the equation delta Hx equals delta H over N. Our delta H value is equal to negative Q and is therefore negative 7.942 kilojoules. We divide this by our moles and get an answer of negative 378.2 kilojoules per mole. Now we can repeat these same steps for our second reaction using the measurements recorded of our magnesium oxide and our change in temperature, which is 13 degrees Celsius. This gives us a molar enthalpy of negative 108.68 kilojoules per mole. We have now calculated our delta H value for the two equations and used them to determine the enthalpy change of our target reaction through Hess's law. To do this, we are also given a third reaction with a delta H of negative 286 kilojoules. Abiding by what we have learned about Hess's law, we can see that we must flip our second equation in order to properly align our reactants and products. This will also change our delta H value to positive 108.68 kilojoules. Now we can simply cross out our products and reactants from different equations until we have reached our target equation. Finally, we can solve for our delta H value of our target reaction by adding the sum of our given reactions. So we add our delta H value of reaction 1, 2, and 3 to reach our final value of negative 537.52 kilojoules. This is our enthalpy change of the reaction magnesium plus half O2 makes magnesium oxide. The most famous application of Hess's law are reactions which occur within our body when we consume food and then use that food as an energy source when working out. When we work out, we often say that we burn calories. In reality, the food goes through a series of oxidation processes located in the mitochondrial matrix. During these oxidation processes, products are produced such as CO2 and water. Hess's law shows that the energy change is independent of the pathway. This means that the same amount of energy is released when burning food. Hess's law is also closely related to one of the topics we have explored earlier in the semester. This is the topic of thermodynamics. The essential premise of Hess's law is thermal energy conservation. It also complies with the first law of thermodynamics, as according to both laws, the total energy in a system undergoing a chemical reaction or other activity stays constant throughout the process. Um, thank you everybody for watching our video. We're so glad to have you as our viewers. If you want more content like this, subscribe down here.